Hi everyone, my name is Leah Horlick and I'm thrilled to be reading three poems for you today from Moldovan Hotel, my new book of poetry forthcoming from Brick Books on April 1st or any minute now. The book is so fresh that I'm reading to you from my laptop today because I don't even have my own copies yet, so this is very exciting. You can still pre-order your copy from your favorite independent bookstore like Shelf Life here in Calgary or wherever the video finds you. This book is about intergenerational trauma, specifically focusing on the Holocaust in Romania and contemporary Moldova, or the former Bessarabia. Um, in 2016, I learned that the community where my great-grandparents were from hadn't actually been destroyed in the Shoah, and as a result, most of what I had learned about the Holocaust growing up didn't have anything to do with my family's flight from anti-Semitism. So thanks to the Canada Council in 2017, I was lucky enough to become the first woman in my family to set foot back in the village since the Holocaust. And this book explores that trip that I took and um, what I learned about contemporary Islamophobia and Holocaust denial in Romania today. If you are in a book club or if you're a teacher, maybe with a geography or a history or a religious studies class, I've written a reader's and a teacher's guide that you can download for free from the Brick Books website. You can find it just by clicking on the cover of my book and following the prompts. It's free. Um, and please get a hold of me if there's anything I can do to support your classroom or your discussion group. Um, you can also ask your public library to pick up a copy or consider asking your synagogue library to bring in a copy as well. So this first poem I'm going to share with you today starts with an epigraph that's a piece of graffiti that you see all over Romania. And I was really glad someone gave me a heads up about this because it's kind of a joke. It's so ubiquitous, like it's in memes and stuff. But if you have the kind of relationship to the territory that my family does, it's actually quite sinister. So the graffiti slogan is Basarabia ye Romania, which means Bessarabia is Romania, and it's referring to the territory annexed by Russia during the Second World War that now forms the independent country of Moldova, and Romania would really like that back. So this piece is called Annex. No matter your love for the trees, the color blue, twilight comes to the forest false border between day and night and safety. Bessarabia calcifies around me, shatters and dissolves, heralds electric light. The only reason we know where we are is a bird call that screams from the future. That's not a real place anymore, over and over. The edge of Europe is a river that recedes from Ukraine saying, get out now. Somewhere, a foundry begins to glow a faint fire. The air turns to smoke. Iron pulls itself back into the earth, dreading a national purpose. I pull the forest around me and sprout needles. I pull the forest around me and grow knots, a cash bowl, soak up groundwater, fade into a step and wait for death. Night is that bird call. Night, your friend, the thief, is ruined. Night is a uniform, the earth who never turned you away. Bessarabia collapses out of English, becomes spray paint on an overpass, primary colors on cement, block letters crushed into a church. Does the earth turn towards you or away? What do you call something you see everywhere that tried to kill you, but doesn't exist anymore? So I was in Romania for about two weeks. I think I spent about a total of three days in contemporary Moldova before I realized it was probably time to get out of Dodge. Um, and this poem is about driving down the coast of Romania to the Black Sea afterwards. It's called Marginal Sea. Constanza is a benign myth after fields on fields on iron on loss. We counted every possible symbol from Yash down. This cow, this stork's nest, this grandparent, this tasseled horse. All of Romania flooded with fog and light and sunflowers until the ocean, really a marginal sea. Absent-minded oval, ocean's afterthought. A whole day in endless procession to the water, the last inhale of lunar eclipse, draws a black swirl around our knees. 
We try to take a photo by the single flame of a lighter, our faces two red orbs. The sound is water on glass, on sand, on legend, rattle and chime of all the evil eyes for sale along the boardwalk, still awake, blinking. Under the drag back is Ovid, exiled among the fish, Princess Anastasia, ghost of the monk's seal, two kinds of dolphins, one species of porpoise, zebra mussels, common carp. We stand on the edge and wave to all the countries so close we can feel them turn in for the night. Good night, Armenia. Good night, Iran. Good night, Azerbaijan. I have been carrying a lot of waves I promised I would deliver heavy eyelid of Europe, propped open by the road sign pointing to Istanbul. One by one, the Argonauts roll over in their sleep. So this last poem is called Every Name Means Across the River, and it's about Transnistria, which is the concentration camp where many of my relatives were deported. It begins with a quote. Govern there as if Romania had been ruling these territories for two million years. What will happen afterwards? We'll see. Dictator Ion Antonescu to Jorge Alexianu, head of the occupation regime of Transnistria, December 6th, 1941. May their names be blotted out. Dear cousins, your labor camp is its own republic. The mass grave wants its independence. The Soviets still reach their long arm across the river, Abkhazia, Nagorno-Karabakh, South Ossetia. Statues of dead men who made your dead are everywhere. When you hold your ear above the river, you can hear footsteps pacing around and around the Black Sea. Transnistria has its own president. The same way Dachau is a town, Dachau has always been a town. It was easier to visit. Children rode their tricycles around and around the camp. The nuns, there were nuns there. They had taken a vow of silence, a gold cross silent on the roof, their long habits sweeping the silent ground. I really hope you'll join me on Zoom on March 16th to hear more from the book. I am so honored to be co-launching Moldovan Hotel with Iron Goddess of Mercy, Larissa Lai's new book of poetry um, with Arsenal Pulp Press. I'm always in awe of Larissa's work. Now we are neighbors since I live in Calgary and our books are kindred spirits, especially at this particular moment. Um, Iron Goddess of Mercy is a long poem inspired by the vengeance of the Furies and the tumultuous history of Hong Kong from the Japanese and British occupation to the ongoing pro-democracy protests. We're really honored to be hosted by Vivek Shreya, author of the new release, How to Fail as a Pop, a Pop Star, also from Arsenal, and very grateful to Jun and the Shelf Life team for all their support organizing this launch. You can find all the information, including registration and accessibility on the Shelf Life website or Facebook page. Uh, you can also find it through my Instagram at Leo Horlick through the link tree in my bio. Thank you so much for tuning in today, for spending some time with me and this book, for preparing to join me and Larissa Lai in celebration on March 16th. And I really look forward to hearing about how this book and these poems might keep you company in the coming months. Can't wait to celebrate with you soon. Thanks so much, everyone.